For the second time this week, the Supreme Court has handed down a major decision that goes against the Trump administration. Five months before the presidential election, and with Trump experiencing dropping poll numbers, it puts him in a bad position. On Monday the Supreme Court voted 6-3 to three to determine employees cannot be discriminated against based on not just their sex but their sexuality. Wednesday they voted 5-4 to four to determine the Trump administration cannot shut down the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, aka DACA, and the Dreamers. Chief Justice John Roberts once again voted with the liberal justices Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Stephen Breyer, Elena Kagan, and Sonia Sotomayor in this decision. He wrote that the government didn't provide an adequate justification for ending DACA. However, the administration is allowed to try to shut it down again if it gives a more detailed explanation for doing so. We conclude that the acting secretary did violate the Administration Procedure Act and that the decision to rescind the program must be vacated, wrote the Chief Justice. He referred to the administration's total rescission as arbitrary and capricious. There are nearly 800,000 dreamers in the program that allows them to avoid being deported. Early in Trump's time in office, the Department of Homeland Security ordered the program to end, although it has been kept going by lower court rulings. If they were under 16 when their parents brought them to the United States and if they arrived by 2007, they have been allowed to stay. Roberts' majority opinion relied on the belief that Trump broke the laws governing federal agencies when he ended DACA in 2017 because the memorandum of the order did not address crucial parts of the policy. Every justice in the majority, save for Sotomayor, dismissed the argument that brought the case to the high court, that the decision to terminate DACA was motivated by Latino discrimination. However, Roberts also pointed out it wasn't necessarily unconstitutional for the administration to terminate DACA. Yet, the way it did terminate it was. He added that the DHS could simply revisit its legal strategy and try again to terminate DACA. The appropriate recourse is, therefore, to remand to DHS so that it may reconsider the problem anew, he wrote. Conservative Justices Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, and Brett Kavanaugh both agreed with the majority in part and with parts of the dissent. The way they see it, the decision is only pushing the issue back to the administration. The court still does not resolve the question of DACA's rescission, wrote Alito in his dissent. Instead, it tells the Department of Homeland Security to go back and try again. Thomas wrote, today's decision must be recognized for what it is, an effort to avoid a politically controversial but legally correct decision. He also said the court could have made clear that a solution to the question of the status of DACA must come from Congress via immigration legislation. Instead, the majority has decided to prolong DHS's initial overreach by providing a stopgap measure of its own, wrote Thomas. In doing so, it was given the green light for future political battles to be fought in this court rather than where they rightfully belong the political branches. Not surprisingly, Trump had a problem with the decision and said so on Twitter. He retweeted a screenshot of part of Thomas's dissent. He later wrote, These horrible and politically charged decisions coming out of the Supreme Court are shotgun blasts into the face of people that are proud to call themselves Republicans or conservatives. He asked, do you get the impression that the Supreme Court doesn't like me? The President also insisted more justices are needed, or we will lose our Second Amendment and everything else. Vote Trump 2020. He added that he'd be releasing a new list of conservative nominees by September 1st. Former Vice President Joe Biden, the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, referred to the Supreme Court's ruling as a victory that was made possible by the courage and resilience of hundreds of thousands of DACA recipients who bravely stood up and refused to be ignored. He also made the promise that if he is elected, he will immediately work to make it permanent by sending a bill to Congress on day one of my administration. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, D. New York, became emotional on the Senate floor before responding to the news of the decision after it was announced. He admitted he cried tears of joy and referred to the High Court's decision and Monday's ruling as a bright ray of sunshine. He said repeatedly, who would have thought, several times, along with wow. 
former President Barack Obama who signed DACA as an executive order in 2012 used the decision to urge his followers in a tweet to vote for Biden because he would create a system that's truly worthy of this nation of immigrants once and for all. He added that he is happy for the dreamers, their families, and all of us. We may look different and come from everywhere, but what makes us American are our shared ideals. Immigration attorneys told the court that frontline health care workers who are involved in responding to the coronavirus pandemic rely on about 27,000 DACA recipients, including dentists, pharmacists, physician assistants, home health aides, technicians, and medical students. Termination of DACA during this national health emergency would be catastrophic, they said in a court filing on April 2. The Association of American Medical Colleges said last fall, before the pandemic, that the country is not prepared to fill the loss that would result if DACA recipients were excluded from the healthcare workforce.